This PC is old enough to drink. Two years ago. Introducing the XTM3 from Fantex, micro ATX chassis built for power and performance. Compact yet packed with potential, the XTM3 features support for rear connect motherboards, dedicated radiator space at the top, and triple fan locations at the bottom to help keep your GPU cool. With its innovative layout and sleek, clean design, the XTM3 is ready to take on almost any gaming PC configuration and cooling challenge. Check out the link in the description for more details. This is a vintage Nobilis that I bought off eBay two years ago <laughs> that I, I didn't forget. I just, I wanted to do some retro tech stuff and I just kind of got sidetracked and never came to it. So I'm gonna look up the old eBay listing I got it from because I, I don't remember much about this system. I do know that the listing said it works. I need to get an AGP graphics card for it. I know I've talked about this in the past and I got a bunch of emails of people saying, I'll send you my card, but I, I wanna buy it and source it myself. The build date on this, on the sticker on the back is 0802. Let me put it this way. I had started dating my wife a year and eight months prior to that. We will be together 26 years this January coming up. We are celebrating our 20 year wedding anniversary uh, on the 15th of this month. And that is three years after this was made. So this is like, this feels like a barn find. Yeah. Like you see those videos like, has it been on the road in 25 years? Like this PC hasn't, PC'd and I don't know how long, <laughs> or a bit of relevant PC, I should say. Nobilis PC for retro gaming. Pentium 4, 1.6 gigahertz, 256 megabytes of RAM. I got it July 16th, 2024, so over, over a year ago, not two years. It cost me $118.47 when I got it. And here's the funny thing about this. Because it doesn't have a graphics card, right? This is still like a standard ATX type layout motherboard. I could easily do a retro, like a, a, a retro build in this, like a sleeper build, with a modern motherboard in it. It would all fit in here just fine. But the crazy part is, I was like, dang, it doesn't even have DVI or any of that. It just has VGA. We happen to have a VGA cable, and we actually happen to have a modern monitor that has a freaking VGA on the back with no display port. It was actually one of the spare monitors for the monitor wall. <laughs> it was the one I bought to replace the one on the bottom left, which has that dark line through it, and I just, there's a theme of laziness here, okay? Because I didn't want to take the damn thing down to change it. And for the most part, we can't really see it anyway. So this has just been sitting there. So thank God, because I probably would have e-wasted that or tossed it or something. And then we would have no monitor today to even see if this works. So happy accident, right? As good old uh, Bob Ross, as good old Bob Ross would say. All right, let me get this all plugged in. Hopefully these devices will work on USB 2. I mean, USB 3 devices are backwards compatible, right? Okay, I'm gonna take the side panel off because I kind of want to look inside real quick. Okay. And there's a few dust bunnies in there. I'm amazed at the fact that they broke a blade off the CPU fan. Oh, really? I, I have a feeling we could probably find a fan that'll work on there somewhere. Dude, the clips and stuff, man, that's so old. Okay, so it's a single stick of 256. Well, we got a green light on the motherboard, so that's a good sign, right? All right, are we ready? Where the hell's the button? Oh. The vibration from that fan. Dude, that boots up so fast. <laughs> Holy crap. The vibration though from that fan. Wow, okay, so it really works. Dude, the vibrations are so bad. Free instant messenger. Nice. <laughs> Free AOL. Oh, heck yeah. Uh-oh, we got no mouse. This mouse may not work. <laughs> oh, the smell. Ugh. It smells like when you start an, a car that's been sitting forever with cobwebs on the exhaust. And that, that's what it smells like. That would really suck if the USBs for some reason didn't work. Like I'm getting light on the keyboard. It only took a five minutes plus for the USB driver to engage. Now, it is freakishly slow. And the reason for that is we think there's like this AOL, it was showing like an AOL system scan. And I, we think that that might've been one of the things that was causing it. So I'm not even sure, like it's been so long since I've used XP. Microsoft Security Essentials. <laughs> they were both going. Yeah. Yeah, so this is like the XP version of Defender, which is Microsoft Security Essentials was scanning and so was AOL. 
That's asking a lot of this hardware. This is pretty bare bones hardware, even for its time. Projection turn off. Save changes. America Online 9.0. My God, this brings me back. Fun fact, I didn't meet my wife on AOL, but I met her friend on AOL who I was dating, who I met my wife through. So technically it's not an internet relationship. Dude, it's vibrating so bad because of that fan. It sounds like a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I kind of want to like, are the AOL servers still online or are they finally shut, shut down? They literally last week finally got rid of the dial-up service. So they actually shut down the last modem. Aww. Damn it, if I had done this last year, I might have been able to actually go to a chat room. <laughs> Don't mind the fact that they're ripped. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Look, I even drew the two. The two? Nice. <laughs> the screensaver, does it have the pipes? Tell me this doesn't remind you of walking into CompUSA and seeing all the desktops lined up, but they were all doing this because they were saving the, the monitors, right? The, the CRTs and crap back then. You gotta do the uh, 3D text. <laughs> it's even, it's even, yeah, Chrome. it's even RTXing. <laughs> yes. Okay, so we were poking around in the BIOS right now because I actually am ordering some upgrades for this because we want to do some era gaming like Battlefield 2. To do like any 3D gaming on this, we need an accelerator, right? And we don't have one. Uh, also too, the CPU is a little old for the era. The RAM's a little light for the amount that we're gonna need, but I ordered some upgrades. And here's the thing, I paid 100 and what did I say? $113 or whatever for this build. <clears throat> I'm ordering a new Cooler Master Socket 478 CPU cooling fan. Um, screws mount type. Oh wait, this is clip mount type. Okay, so I need to change that, but I, I took one out of the cart actually. That's $28.75. You can buy the Montec like 400, 120 millimeter cooler for less than that. And that's actually in the retro build over there. Uh, we are ordering two new Intel Pentium 4s just to make sure that they work, right? Get a working one. So for $9.95, I'm gonna Intel Pentium 2, 2.4 gigahertz P4, uh, four, socket 478 CPU with 512 cache. And then I'm also paying $23 for a 2.40A CPU um, with 533, Yes, yes, 533 bus speed. Both say tested working in an XP machine. Um, I am getting a stick of Kingston one gigabyte DDR1-266 memory because this is a single channel memory with two banks. So it's not dual channel, but we can up the, the RAM. We need to up the RAM because Battlefield has a minimum of 512. So now we will have 1.256 gigabytes of RAM running at a blistering 266 megahertz. That's a whopping 20 bucks. And the big expense is actually coming from the NVIDIA GeForce 6800 GT 256 megabyte AGP VGA DVI graphics card at $180. Bringing my total to $291 worth of upgrades for a system I paid $113 or $118, whatever it was. All right, well, let me find the cooler real quick. I'll order that and then we will get back to this because the second video is gonna be us upgrading all right, so here's what we, just, what we just went through off camera. I suspect the CPU might be getting warm because it gets really sluggish where I click on things and nothing will happen because if that's 23 year old paste, right? I think we're gonna have a problem. So I do need to, in this video, pull the board out, clean it up, open the, take the cooler off, redo the paste. Because I, th I think it needs to be redone no matter what. The fan's busted, so who knows how well it's been taken care of. Um, but we were like, wait, we can't even see temperature of the CPU. So core temp is an old utility that works on XP. And uh, what we just went through to get it to in, like even, I haven't installed it yet. We'll do that here in a second. But we got a modern USB stick in the back, as you can see. And even though Phil was formatting it on our Windows 11 system over there in FAT32, it kept saying it needed to format the drive over here. Like it couldn't see it. Somehow, apparently it's a different FAT32. And I, put the drive in and went to File Explorer and then told it format. And then it said, Windows can't format this drive. And we were like, that's weird. And we clicked it again and then it formatted. So then we took it over there and that system hesitated to read it for a minute because it probably didn't know what the hell to make of it. And then it read the drive and we put Core Temp on here. Now we can install Core Temp. So <laughs> it's some of the nuances, I think we really take for granted actually just how good modern OSs are at uh, 
file detection, installation, compatibility, all that sort of stuff. It was much more manual back then. So core temp should just literally just spit out a number. Okay, or, or no number. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Did the P4 not have a temperature sensor? It has to somewhere, no. Only nanometers, Batman. <laughs> 180 nanometer. <laughs> <laughs> the lithography. Okay, since the system is actually responding to me right now, what if we go ahead and play the rabbit game? The Reader Rabbit Preschool Sparkle Star Rescue. Are you ready? Please insert the disc re I keep forgetting everything required disc back then. So I guess we're not playing a damn thing right now. This is not a drink holder. <laughs> it's a 52X CD reader. This is CD, not DVD, right? And so many people were like, PNY must be some new cheap brand. No, PNY has been around a long, long time. So this is Mark 2005, obviously, which is three years later than this PC came around. Now three years, I feel like tech moved way more in three years back then than it does today. Like you could easily in three years be left behind. But since we are gonna be updating this, might as well save ourselves time in the future by installing this now. And it's gonna be the whole installing, install, insert disk two. But so far it hasn't done like a hardware check to tell me you don't meet the minimum requirements because, oh shit. <laughs> Gotta love these messages. Failed to install Battlefield 2. Try again from the beginning. The crazy part is I just told Phil like, I hear such a scratching sound in there. It was like So I'm wondering if it hurt my disc, which would be so ironic. Oh, that disc is pretty rough though. <laughs> It's got a lot of scratches and it's crap on well it. Loved. Back then, if it couldn't read part of the disc, it might try a few times. But let me let me try to wipe this down. Let me polish it up a little bit and see. But there's some... I didn't even think about the disc cleanliness before I started. That shows how disconnected I am from the past. Same problem. So we think the disc one is just too scratched up. So this is where like archive.org and stuff really comes in handy. We're going to be downloading this game. Like the, the ISOs to basically write to the CDs. Um, we're actually gonna buy, or actually, we're not gonna buy it, we're gonna go to the Micro Center. We're gonna get a uh, external DVD burner, which also will burn CDs. Um, because we think, if we're gonna be doing more retro gaming, we're gonna need a way to burn discs. And because I have purchased the license for the game, it is not piracy for me to download a fresh ISO because I'm using my key to run it. So that's not gonna work today, unfortunately. I just wanted to see if it would install. I don't know, like, I just wish it told me why it's failing to install. Like, other installers would say DVD or disk corrupt or something if it's all weird data. Um, anyway, this is my box of stuff that is CDs that I have saved, or DVDs I have saved for other games. Like that, Battlefield 3. Nice. I forgot that all the time I played Battlefield 3 that that was actually, like, a, a physical disc I owned. Battlefield 2142. 2142 I thought was fun, but not a lot of people played 2142. That seems too new for me to have bought a disc. I don't know why I have the yeah. disc, but I have the disc. Uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. That's way too new for this. Yeah. Modern Warfare 2. Crisis. Nice. What did I say? There it is right there. I would hope. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's, a, it's a workout DVD of Brazilian butt lift. It was my wife's workout. Not me. My, my butt didn't need no lift, it needs to drop. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, just in preparation now, cause that's about all we can do in today's video. Um, we didn't get it online yet. And I just wanna update it so I can play some of these older games. Here's the crazy part. How much slower things move today? Like, that's why the whole Moore's Law is dead thing is kind of a slogan, because this computer is five years old from when Crisis came out. Crisis came out in 2007, the whole Kinda Play Crisis thing, and this is from 2002. In fact, I need a DVD drive to even run the discs. Like, if I want to play it true to the era, like, of course, I can download the ISO as a digital and, and play. I want to do it through the drives and everything as the experience was. You can play games that come out today on a five-year-old system. You can, but not then. So that's why I said earlier, things moved a lot faster uh, back then than they did than they do today. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna get this modem out of here. I really don't need a modem. Push clip, push clip. 
Oh, it's gonna probably try and take the CPU out with it. What do you want, bet? It's gonna AMD this sh Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> do the popping sound. I think that was the original, look, that's the original paste. Wow. This was 23 year old paste right here. You gonna put some KPX on there, baby. <laughs> Why not, right? You know how long it's been since I've had to install one of these? There. It's still easier than AMD's, it's just, AMD has one side that you really have to worry about. This is two. There. Back on. Plug in the fan. I'm just curious now if it's gonna feel any snappier. I don't. I doubt it because I doubt that that. I really doubt that that pace wasn't transferring heat. So I just bought the G4 6800 256 gig AGP 8x. <laughs> oh, megabyte. Sorry, my can't go backwards that easily. For, well, everything I just bought, like it was 180 bucks for that GPU, but everything I just bought to upgrade this rig to play like period stuff, sort of modern, like you know, at, at high end specs would have been for then, for the same price that a 5060 Ti 8 gig card costs. And we know the 8 gig card kind of sucks, but if you really just put that into comparison, comparison, it's, it's kind of ridiculous what true retro rigs, restorations and stuff can cost, especially as that stuff becomes more rare and hard to find, it becomes more valuable. Okay, let's just, I just wanna make sure this fires up, see if it seems any snappier. Uh-oh. <laughs> Why would it not work now? <laughs> I forgot, cause it's right here. <laughs> so it's just the CPU had no power. <laughs> let's try that again, shall we? It should turn on pretty much right away this time. Hey, it helps to have power to your CPU. You know, they, they haven't invented the powerless CPU yet. Okay, it's up and running and works. All right, time to get out of here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first video of us looking at a 23 year old Nobilis system. And uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to upgrading this. I'm looking more forward to upgrading this than any modern system, to be honest. We've had so much fun with the retro like gaming rig that we bought with a, you know, that we built for like the NES and all that sort of stuff. I'm just really looking forward to doing some retro PC gaming now that's era, era correct. I was telling Jay that if we ever build the retro room for the retro thing, now we have an excuse to build yeah. a family computer nook with like that old quarter table that everyone had. Yeah, <laughs> yep, yeah, where you could barely fit a cup on your desk, it was so small. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, put some comments down, the, down below what games you think we should check out from the early 2000s with this system once we upgrade it. See you in the next one.